Here's the hides for the axe drop project, um, or should I say hide? Because some days ago, I noticed that this tub was tipped over, angled at an angle, and the cover was knocked off. And I thought, I knew right away it was bears. And I went and poked around in there, and it, it, all the rocks were in place, and it seemed okay. But I just went to stir these and check them, and uh, two of the hides are missing, including my nice steer hide from this year and the small goat skin. And this is the, uh, the buckskin that was dragged. So I'm going to head off into the woods and see if I can find it. Being saturated with lime, I'm hoping they didn't eat it. I've had them drag off other hides before and then not, you know, not eat them. So uh, my guess is it'll be at least damaged, but maybe some of it will be salvageable. And I don't really care about the goat skin so much. Um, I have lots more of those. But I want that deer skin back, even if... Um, even if I just end up using it as rawhide or experiments or, you know, axe drops or whatever, I want that thing back. So we're going to head down the hill because, of course, it would drag it downhill. So here's what we're dealing with. This is a fairly steep hill, and I'm going to think like a bear. Like I'm dragging something, I'm trying to get away fast. I'm going to head straight downhill this way, you know, not off to the side, not side hill down here and I've also had bears drag other stuff right you know down through here so it's kind of like looking at the ground here but I've cut the grass and I don't see anything obvious like I'm not seeing a trail of hair or anything like that and um, before I went and grabbed my camera I already made it this far I'm just sort of like reenacting what I did and then I get here and look at that you see that that is not a deer. It's very smooth, it's very large, there's a lot of dirt displaced. So that is not a deer because it would be like a sharp imprint. Same here, you know, I don't believe this is a deer. Oh, here we go, right here. Look here, slip with the heel, and then right here, there's the like the paw print with the claws. You know, it's like you, you spread your foot out to, uh, you know, stop. This looks like there's one, one, two, three, four, maybe four toe prints there. And I'm pretty sure that these bears are babies. Here's some more, you know, deep impressions. Oh, hang on a sec. Now this goes straight down. I'm still going to say straight down here. Yeah, maybe probably another print there. Maybe some depressions there. I'm not a very good tracker. Here we go. Scrush, scrunch, scrunch, scrunch. Deer hair, here we go. There's hair from my hide right there. So they might have stopped here for a second, you know. And I'm thinking that these are baby bears, but you know, that, those prints look a little bigger. But again, if I was a bear, I'd probably keep heading downhill, get away from the danger, because, you know, I've let them know I don't want them up here. Chasing them off. And so they, they probably think of coming here as a, a risk. Okay, now I'm just kind of wandering, not even looking at the ground. I'd expect it to find it within here, between here and the creek probably, which is only, is very close. Or... This is all assuming they didn't actually just eat it. Ah, bears, such a pain. That one time, they stole like a carcass and drug it down in here and hid it in the bushes. You know, you move into a wild area and uh, bears like to eat the same stuff we do, and then some, you know? They also will eat our garbage. Yeah, I think that one time the carcass, it was down in here and they had like kicked some leaves over it. And I took it back and then I took it again like a couple, two or three times. It was just this little war going on. So they want the fruit on the trees. 
They want, you know, anything edible. And even if you're clean, it's like they, they know there's food there. You can't clean up the apples on your tree before they're ripe, but they'll eat them way before they're ripe and break the tree in half while they're at it. And then everything wants to eat the chickens, which are pretty defenseless. I had a stray house cat eating the chickens for a while. And now I have another stray ha house cat that lives here, but it really stays out of sight. Like, very rarely will I see it. It doesn't know that it can kill a chicken. You know, of course it can, but it doesn't know that. Which is a good thing for it because Okay, I, I should really be tracking here and not <laughs> talking. That could be a deep bear imprint. See, I stopped tracking back there when it stopped being obvious and I started talking and now, now I'm just walking around looking for a hide. I need Velton. Where's Velton? Velton's got mad tracking skills. I'm just gonna go a little further here and look for a sign and then I'm gonna reevaluate. But at this point, I'm kind of thinking, I'm not gonna find it. And if they did like it, they've had days to come back and keep munching on it. But this is just getting less and less travel. The trails are fraying out into nothing. And I don't really see anything over here, you know? Bears are, are big and clumsy. And when they walk, they move everything around their high impact. Okay, so now I'm gonna look for the place. Before I go back to where I saw a sign last and reevaluate, I'm gonna go and look for the easiest place in the creek to cross over. This, probably not a deer. Eh, it's kinda hard to tell. Same here. Anyway, I'm gonna look for the easiest places to cross this little creek right here. And I would expect to see a lot of damage going down one side and up the other. Like more than this, this looks pretty clean right here. <clears throat> and if they're crossing down a slope like that and back at the other side, I'm kind of guessing I would probably see some hair from the hide. Now this is a little messed up. Yeah, that's kind of messed up. Kind of expect more, but I think I'm gonna go check and check for hair. Yeah, not there. Not seeing any hair. It just doesn't look messed up enough either. That's kind of what I'm thinking. I think I'll just take the creek. See if we can find a place where there's an obvious bear crossing because I think it should be fairly obvious because there really aren't many good places to cross here. Here we go. But that looks pretty clean to me. And maybe too they're just like went another way because they don't want to cross the creek. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking now, um, I mean, look at these banks. From here up, there's just really not much place to cross, so I'm gonna turn this camera off and go back to where I saw a sign the last and um, concentrate on actually a little tracking, maybe try to find this thing. If I find it, you'll, you'll hear about it. So this is the really obvious spot where there's, you know, there's hair on the ground here and there's lots of compacted mud from you know them stepping or walking around. So that's not really good news because if they didn't like it, they probably would have left it here. You know, they're down the hill a ways from the tanning tree, which is up there. And you know, if they thought they were safe, they might sit here and munch on it for a while, make sure it was food. Anyway, um, I would guess they wouldn't go this way. You know, who knows, but my guess is not. But they easily could have gone this way because this is a flat road bed and it's a lot easier. So I got hair here. So if I can find hair just down this trail or just down this trail, then, you know, I have something to go on. 
And that's what I should have done in the first place instead of just stomping off across down the trail itself, like muddying up the the uh, track. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get intimate here and look for hairs. You know, the hair should be falling out freely by the time they took it. So wherever they took it, there's gonna be hairs here and there. But whether we can spot them. Okay, here we go. There's a big old clump of hair right there. So it definitely went the way that I thought it would the first time, so my intuition was right on that. And I'm gonna say nothing. I'm gonna get back to work. <laughs> See ya. So I'm gonna give up this search. Um, I just have to do like a cost-benefit analysis. It's really time consuming. The trail's gone cold. You know, tracking is just time consuming. That's one of the reasons I'm not very good at it because I don't put in the bush time I need to get good at it because that's what it takes. And um, yeah, cost-benefit analysis. You know, the hides, it could have been out as long as a week. So it could be damaged just because it's out of the lime. I think it would probably be usable, definitely for some stuff. So, but it could be completely consumed. It could be, you know, half consumed. Chances are it's at least partially consumed. And I may put in an hour, two hours, and not find the thing. These huge raindrops keep threatening to waste my camera here, so. So, yeah, I mean, I could put in an hour or two and not find it, and, um, I got a lot of other stuff I should be doing, so you just got to roll with the punches, take that as a loss. What I need to do is cover those. I mean, I've had this happen more than once now, even with the lime tides, because I kind of tend to think, oh, it's lime tides, they're not going to you know, want to eat that, or that they'll kind of pull it out and drag it a little way and leave it, but um, it probably depends on how hungry they are and how long it's out there, because there's other animals that could come and munch on it, coyotes, or carry it off. Yeah, so what I need to do is put on like a board over the top and then put something on top that makes a ton of noise when they tip it over. Cause you can't keep them from tipping it over. It's a bear. I mean, they can, <laughs> they can dip over anything, but you know, I can make a lot of noise so that I could, I know they're there and I can get up and scare them off. Check out this, this little guy. Now that it's raining, these guys come out and they just start walking all over the place. I think, I don't know what they're doing, you know, they spend the summer, I think, in the water or hiding in the water or something, and then when it starts raining, they come out, you just see them walking around. This is like a, a newt treadmill, exercise treadmill. I don't know what they're doing, I mean, eventually, of course, they mate, I don't know how soon that happens, and then when it stops raining, they disappear for six months. Yeah, like I said, I think they live in the water. So I heard these guys are really poisonous. I'm not about to eat one to find out. All right, I feel bad now. He certainly doesn't seem very smart, but he's persistent. That's a good quality. Okay, we're gonna let this guy go and I'm gonna go do some of the work I need to do rather than run around in the woods looking for my hide, which I'd honestly probably rather do. All right, later. It's like, whew, I can rest now. Now this is a newt, not a salamander. I have no idea what that means. And let's just take a look at that belly. Look at that. What that says is don't eat me. Danger, danger. Why else would you have that red belly? Because otherwise it just attracts attention, right? Look at that. It's like someone starts to eat it, flips it over. Don't even. You'll be sorry. Don't eat me.